Hello there and welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk. In this episode I'm going to be going through my entire DVD collection and what few Blu-rays I have as well. Uh, just really for a bit of fun and so you guys can see I, I guess my collection and get a, a, an idea of, of what my tastes are and, and just have a bit of fun really. It's going to be fun for me just to go through and look at each one of these. Some of these films I, I haven't even seen in a, in a good long while because I buy them, they end up on the shelf and I never get around to actually watching them but it's just the, the, the nature of a collector I guess. Uh, so. I, th I think I'm going to do this video in two parts because I've got quite a lot of DVDs so if, if, if I put them all in this one video it'll probably run well over an hour which let's face it is a bit boring or can be. Um, so this is part one and I'll be doing all this lot basically and then in part two I'll be doing all this lot. Um, so let's begin. Okay starting off with 007. Uh, I've got all the Bond films. Dr. No, personally my favourite Connery Bond from Russia With Love. Obviously if you've been watching my Bond reviews recently you'll know that this doesn't rank as highly for me as a lot of other people uh, when it comes to Bond films. I think it's a little overrated, I find it a, a little dull but for completest sake I have it. Goldfinger, um, for many people this is the quintessential Bond, it's essentially what started many of the of, of the of the traits that became familiar with Bond. Um, good film. Thunderball, again, solid Bond. Pretty much what you expect with a Connery Bond film to be honest. You Only Live Twice, uh, reviewed this fairly recently on my channel, go and check that out. Um, I'm not actually going to delve too much into the Bond films, I don't want to say too much about them. Just because I am reviewing them all currently on my channel so there you go. Um, so I'll just I'll, I'll whiz through these. You Only Live Twice, obviously, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, which I actually think is so far in the Bond films I've been reviewing, this has been my favourite. Uh, Connery's a better Bond, but Lazy and We Got a better film, I think. Um, Diamonds Are Forever, that'll be my next one to review. Live and Let Die with the uh, CEX sticker still on there, just in case you want to know where I buy my DVDs from. Uh, Man with a Golden Gun, um, not the best film in the Bond franchise I don't think but we'll get to that. Spy Who Loved Me, um, highly regarded amongst Bond fans I believe, we'll see when I get to it. Moonraker, For Your Eyes Only, actually one of my favourite Bond films, well one of my favourite more Bond films, um, again we'll get to it. Octopussy. View to a Kill. This is the this is the Bond film I remember growing up with. Actually, my brother was mad on this film, and he'd watch it repeatedly. Um, and I don't know, just by virtue of him constantly having it on, I'd end up seeing it about twenty times a, a year. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I, I really really like it. Um, it's it's rubbish. I acknowledge its flaws, but there you go. Uh, Living Daylights. Um, I I prefer. Licence to Kill, um, many Bond fans I think prefer this but Dalton I think should have got a bit more of a shot at Bond, I think two films wasn't enough and Licence to Kill for me was my favourite of his. Uh, Goldeneye, this really is where kind of Bond for me kind of took off, um, I was never that much into Bond as a child but I saw this film and it was the first time I thought well actually let's go back, let's have a look at this franchise because this film is fantastic, it's one of the best Bond films. Um, Tomorrow Never Dies, World Is Not Enough, for me one of the most underrated Bond films, I really like it, really enjoy it, um, if there's a Bond film that I tend to stick on a lot this is one of them, this would be in like the, the top five that I would tend to go to uh, more than most. Um, and then obviously Die Another Day which yeah. Uh, Casino Royale. I'm going to say it, it's the best Bond film. It is the best Bond film. Um, I also have Quantum of Solace and Skyfall, but they're on Blu ray, so we'll get to them later. Okay, that's Bond out of the way. So, uh, on to my others. About Schmidt. Um, really, really. I, I didn't like this film actually uh, when I first saw it. I, I thought it was a bit dull. Um, and I, I thought it probably deserved a reappraisal because Alexander Payne is actually a really good filmmaker. Sideways for me is still my favourite film of his. 
So I revisited this film and on second viewing I really liked it. Um, it was a completely different film on second viewing, I don't know why, but I laughed um, when the first time I saw it I didn't. Um, about time, I uh, got this from my wife. This is, yeah, the, just so you know, uh, my wife's DVDs are also amongst this collection. We don't separate our DVDs, but I'm happy to to, to show them because what's hers is mine and what's mine is hers. Um, but about time, actually, I bought this for her birthday and it's actually really a really good film. Uh, Richard Curtis, um, probably my favorite of his, actually. I, I think a lot of his films are slightly overrated. Four Weddings and a Funeral, The Boat That Rocked, films like that. But this, this, this to me had a lot more heart than his usual movies, um, and a lot of a lot more resonance for me uh, now, particularly being a father and the relationship I have with my own father as well. Just I don't know. Just it's, it's just a really good father son story. Um, so I highly recommend it. Um, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, bit of a guilty pleasure. Uh, well, no, it's not. It's not a guilty pleasure, is it? It's a good comedy. Um, I just, I'm not much of a comedy person. You're not going to find many comedies amongst my DVDs. Um, this is here just because when I was a teenager and this came out, I just laughed my backside off at this so much, so many times. I've not seen this recently, actually. I bought this DVD recently. Um, my wife picked it up for me, actually. Um, very cheap. So I'm going to get around to watching it again, but if, if it holds up to my memories of it, then I'm in for a treat. Um, adaptation, really great film. Spike Jones, uh, one of his best, I think. I, I love the script uh, by, who is it? Charlie Kaufman, that's it. It actually says Donald Kaufman on here as well, but that's made up. It's a bit of an in-joke for the film. Um, I think, I do believe, unless I've just made that up, Check that out, do a fact check, but I think I think that's right. Um, but this is a really great script and a fantastic performance by Nicolas Cage. Um, this, these are the kind of films that Nicolas Cage should be making more of, because it proves that he is a really great actor. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately he, he's making stuff like Left Behind and... Yeah... Uh, Tintin, uh, this was meant to be a trilogy. I think they are still going to be making another two. I think it's a really great animated film. This one's directed by Steven Spielberg. The second one was supposed to be done by Peter Jackson. For various reasons, it's, it's, it's yet to have come about. Uh, but I really like this, and it made me eager to see it turn into a franchise. I would like to see a trilogy made. Um, I, th I think Andy Serkis in this is, is fantastic, actually. Made me laugh quite a few times. Uh, Age of Innocence, not seen this. Um, it's one that I bought, not got around to watching, uh, but big Michelle Pfeiffer fan. Have been since the 90s. Uh, I was very big on Michelle Pfeiffer in, in, the, in the 90s, primarily because of Batman Returns. But this is directed by Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese doing a period drama, so I thought, you know, could be interesting. It's a U though, which is quite odd for, for Scorsese, uh, but I will check that out. Um, Aladdin, this was the first film I ever went into a cine cinema by myself to see. Uh, yeah, just passing the, the local multiplex and I don't know, I just saw the poster for Aladdin, heard a lot about it. I was 13 years old at the time and just thought, yeah, why not, you know? Go in, watch a movie by myself. Aladdin was the first. Uh, Alien Quadrilogy. Alien Resurrection is not a great film, mainly because of the last 10, 15 minutes. It kind of blows it, I think. Um, and there's some awful scenes like within the first third of the film that should have just been taken out. But yeah, the, the original Alien trilogy, including Alien 3, which I think is a little bit underrated. I think David Fincher obviously had his hands tied by the studio during that. There's a lot of interference and it does show in that film. That being said, it's still a really good film. But nothing beats the first two. Alien and Aliens show you how to do a classic and then follow it up with another classic. Um, two great films in that box set. Uh, Okay, I don't know whether to show you this, but you know I am going through the entire collection, so I do have to own up to certain things, and one of those things is Alien vs Predator. And 
Alien vs Predator 2 Requiem. I don't know that there's any excuse to have these in a collection, but for completeness sake and somewhat of a guilty pleasure and I'm actually the only person that I know who prefers the second Alien vs Predator to the first one but yeah um, moving on Almost Famous brilliant film this is Cameron Crowe's best film um, it's just it really delves into the, the the music industry and just the particularly from the journalistic side of things and and fame and how how we get caught up with celebrity and and just all those kind of things and it's just it's just a really brilliant script a story very well told uh great support from the likes of philip seymour hoffman kate hudson's best performance beyond the shadow of a doubt yeah really fantastic film uh, American Beauty won Best Picture Oscar in 99, no 2000 I think, uh, again fact check, um, but yeah fantastic film, uh, probably I would still say Sam Mendes best, um, but that's not to sell him short because he's done a, a lot of really great films, but just this has a lot of heart in it and Kevin Spacey gives an, an absolutely fantastic performance, really good film, highly recommended. Um, American Hustle, saw this fairly recently. I was a bit put off from watching it for quite a while because it looked like it might be a little bit pretentious. Maybe David O. Russell was going to go a little bit too artsy. But I really, really liked it. I watched this film, I thought it was fantastic. Um, it was the actors that mainly draw, drew me in. Christian Bale is always good. I, I love Amy Adams, I think she's a fantastic actress and Bradley Cooper has just come on something something amazing over these past few years uh, particularly since his first collaboration with David O. Russell, Silver Linings Playbook um, which I don't own actually, really want to own, great film, highly recommend it. Um, next, American President, my favourite writer is Aaron Sorkin, he wrote this film um, for anyone who's seen The West Wing, which is my favourite TV series, this film might actually seem a little slow uh, compared to that. This is the blueprint for The West Wing, um, but yeah, it's not quite as good, and I feel that like that's down to the direction, really. I think the, the, the pace is brought right down, and uh, it's still a great film, still a re re really great film, but once you've seen The West Wing, because I saw The West Wing first before this, I think going back from the West Wing to that made the film lose something I think uh, but it's still a really good film uh, Anastasia not seen it bought it not got around to watching it um, The Apartment one of my favorite films from the 60s I think this is 1960 actually yep 1960 uh, really great film really strong performance from well from both Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lemmon but particularly Jack Lemmon um, yeah, this is this is a classic beyond a shadow of a doubt, um, and it did win Best Picture at the Oscars actually. So check that out. Uh, Apocalypto, um, very violent film, uh, typically with Mel Gibson, which he di he directed this, but it's it's a fantastic chase movie. That's essentially what it is. Um, a, a guy's family is stolen, and he goes to get them back, and then and then when he gets them back, he's essentially being chased. Uh, th through the through the landscape of this film, and it's just it's just a really good film, very good action film. Highly recommend it. Don't let the subtitles put you off if you're one of those people. Uh, if you are one of those people, actually, just I don't know, go and watch a Michael Bay film. Um, but Argo, again, another Best Picture Oscar winner. Um, ben Affleck really robbed at the Oscars um, not not I don't think he was even nominated for best director uh, again fact check that uh, but from what from what I remember I don't think he was nominated for best director which in itself is a crime because this one best film um, he was fantastic performance in it as well so it's a film like this and uh, the one he made previous to this, The Town, that really get me excited for his interpretation of Batman. A lot of people are so stuck on the past. Um, the films he, he was responsible for <laughs> making previously before he kind of stepped up his game. And I think people like that seriously, seriously need to let that go because he's proven himself 
particularly with the three films he's directed, that he he's a fantastic filmmaker and he's a force to be reckoned with, um, particularly in Hollywood. So looking forward to him as Batman. Uh, Armageddon. Not a big Michael Bay fan, picked this up really cheap. Um, it's something I can stick on and just kind of not think about anything really. Uh, just just let it play in the background. Um, I, just, I just wish Michael Bay would get rid of his crude humour, and I use humour in the loosest sense of the word. There's so many times during his films that he thinks he's being funny, but he's just being lewd and it's often really inappropriate when it's in films like Transformers which are marketed towards kids. Beyond that I'm not going to get on my soapbox about Michael Bay. It Things blow up and if you want to see things blow up this is a pretty good film to see that for. Um, AI, fantastic Steven Spielberg film. This should have been a Stanley Kubrick film. It's got Stanley Kubrick's fingerprints all over it. Um, he did a lot of pre-production work on the film before he died and Spielberg took over but it really does show this feels like a genuine collaboration between Spielberg and Kubrick and it's it's a fantastic film really great performance by Holy jo Haley Joel Osment um, coming off the back of Sixth Sense um, I believe if you watch this film and watch Osment all the way through not once does he blink um, and that's just uh, all credit to the guy, you know, he's, he, was, he must have been like, what, 13 when he did this? 12, 13. Great performance um, and just a really great film. Some fantastic special effects in there. Uh, as good as it gets, um, winner of two Academy Awards, Best Actor, Jack Nicholson, Best Actress, Helen Hunt. Uh, arguable as to whether they deserved it, but uh, nevertheless this is a really great film and it's all down to James L Brooks uh, his screenplay is fantastic the characters are, are just they really draw you in some really sweet characters um, and yeah just just a really good feel-good film I watched this and by the end of it I feel positive about the human race and <laughs> going from positive to about the human race to probably a little bit negative um, Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford this is fantastic it's an outstanding film it was released the same year as There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men those two films were in contention for the best picture uh, Oscar they were they were both nominated this wasn't out of all three I, I feel that this probably is the best film. Uh, there Will Be Blood is really up there for me. It's it's probably in my top 20 films but this is a fantastic film and it's under, underseen. Not many people have seen this, not, not as many as should. Um, there's some grim moments in it and it doesn't really, like I say, show you the best of humanity but it is a fantastic film. Brilliantly directed by Andrew Dominic. His best work to date. Um, Avengers, what can I say? It you know, I'm a Marvel movies fan, so sticking all of their roster of superheroes in one movie, giving it in the, to the hands of Joss Whedon, you just can't go wrong really. It's a fantastic film. Um, probably not as much substance as I would like. I think Captain America 2 is probably a better film, just because focusing more on one character allows you to get a little bit more in depth as to who that character is, whereas with that, it's more about the fights, the explosions, the, the fun. It's a fun film, really fun. Um, but yeah, possibly, hopefully we'll get a bit more substance in, in Age of Ultron just because we've got the, uh, I suppose, all the introductions out of the way, the first meetings out of the way. We can concentrate on a bit more kind of character development. Um, Babel, uh, this is uh, Alejandro Gonzalez Inuritu. Uh, he's got a, a great film out at the moment called Birdman that is probably going to clean up at the Oscars. Um, and this is a really good film of his. Uh, it's it's one of my favourite films is Magnolia, and it uses this method of kind of telling loads of little stories that all converge with each other. And this film kind of does the same thing. It's 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 a very good film. It's got more of a, a kind of worldwide scope to it because it takes place in many different parts around the world whereas Magnolia is just like in one specific part of the world um, so it's 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 really very good and it just it shows us just the need 
to understand each other better and communication and how miscommunication, just simply not understanding other cultures and, and, and languages can really upset the balance of, of relationships of, b between people. Uh, it's just, it's a really great film, some really touching moments in it. And Baby Mama. Uh, the Banquet, really good film, um, not as good as something like Crouching Tiger, I, I was quite a fan of Zhang Ji, um, I think it's a real shame that she doesn't make more films, she seems to have kind of dropped off the map, but at one point uh, during the early noughties she, she has a, had a really strong career, she was putting out a lot of stuff like this, you know, House, House of Flying Daggers, Hero, Crouching Tiger, but she was always really good in them and she's a really good performer and I'd love to see a bit more from her. I, I think she's due a bit of a comeback, to be honest. Um, and Batman, Tim Burton's Batman. This is the film that really started it all for me when it came to Batman. Um, it, I, I didn't actually see it in cinemas. I saw it when it came out at, at, on TV, uh, Christmas of 91, that was. Um, from then on, that was it. I was hooked. I was a Batman fan for life. Uh, it, it's probably dated a little bit now. Um, it, it's pre I, I probably don't ha hold it in as high a regard as I once did, but it's still a fantastic film. Still one of my favourite films of the age. Batman Returns, obviously the, the sequel. For me, the better film of Tim Burton's Batman era. Uh, I, just this really heightened my love for Batman. Uh, I thought Michelle Pfeiffer was brilliant in it. Danny DeVito too. Um, yeah, really good film from the early 90s. Batman Forever. Uh, this is when Joel Schumacher came on board. This isn't a terrible film. It's entertaining primarily because of Jim Carrey. Uh, I think Val Kilmer's makes quite a decent Batman, but he's kind of in the hands of the wrong director really. Yeah, um, and for completest sake, Batman and Robin. This film's just so, it's just so bad. Uh. Mask of the Phantasm, one of the best Batman films ever. It's animated, don't let that put you off. The story in it is fantastic, the direction is fantastic, some really great music, the animation is brilliant. Uh, yeah, just the high point of, of the, uh, the 90s Batman animated series, really. Great film. Um, this is a Batman Superman movie. This is essentially just three episodes of the TV series strung together into a film, but they're three really good episodes. And this is actually a very entertaining, action-packed animated film, uh, which would be tremendous fun for kids. If you've got any sons and daughters, show them this. Brilliant film. Um, again, another, another Batman animated movie, Mystery of the Batwoman, one of the weaker of the uh, animated Batman movies. It just feels like they're trying to be too family friendly with this one and despite it being a 12. So yeah, it, it doesn't doesn't really work as well as the others, but it's still entertaining and it features Bane, which is a good thing, unless you're Batman and Robin. Um, this is a, a US import I've got. I don't have many Region 1 DVDs, but I couldn't get this in the UK, so I didn't really have much choice but to buy it from the US. Um, again, this is a, 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 a spin-off film from the TV series The Batman, not to be confused with Batman the Animated Series. It's not great, it's a solid 6 out of 10, it's entertaining enough, but like I say, I'm a Batman fan and I'll pretty much get any movie that's got Batman in it. Um, Batman Gotham Knights, collection of short stories that all kind of merge into one big one. It, it, some of them are better than others. It, it doesn't feel very, it doesn't feel as coherent as I would like it to be, um, but it's, it's a nice little uh, sandwich between The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises, really. A little, little bit of a tie-in, but uh, very loose. Um, <clears throat> Batman Under the Red Hood. Again, this is this is one of the better uh, animated Batman films. Really, really good example of the kind of stories you can tell with the Batman character uh, if, you, if you're given free reign to do so. And one of my favourite stories, of, well, my favourite story of all time from the comic books, actually, Batman Year One, put together in this film. It probably does lose a little something when it's been translated into this film, primarily because at 61 minutes, um, it really does kind of race through the story. I think this film 
is still quite a high point in Batman animated movies for me, just just by virtue of the the story that it's um, adapting. But I think if they'd have just let it breathe a little bit, um, kind of, I think it did actually need a, a longer running time. It, it feels in some places like they're, they're racing through the key moments, the famous moments from the story, rather than actually like, just letting it breathe a bit. Um, but it's still, still a really good film. Um, Batman The Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, I was never that big on the graphic novel in a way that most Batman fans are. I think it's still a great story. Um, I think it's got some iconic moments for Batman fans in it. Uh, but for me, in these movies, I actually prefer Part 1 to Part 2. Um, it feels like two completely different stories that have been kind of meshed together to make one story. Um, which is a shame, but there you go. And, I, and I'd have preferred it if they'd have just released this as one film instead of splitting it into two. But they gotta make the money. Anyway, Battle of Los Angeles, uh, underrated for me. A lot of people will probably look at this and say, oh, there's a guilty pleasure. Not for me. I think this is a really good film, very well made. Uh, Jonathan Liebsman, I think he proved with this that he can actually direct a decent flick when he's able to. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the circumstances were for him that allowed him to make a good film with this, um, arguably, because I know a lot of people would contest that, and then make rubbish films like Wrath of the Titans and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, although that film's got more of a Michael Bay stamp on it than, than a Jonathan Liebsman. Uh, so, but, but yeah, this... So so far, the high point in his career. Um, Battle of Wits, not seen it, uh, bought it, will get around to watching it at some point. Beauty and the Beast, the best Disney animated film, period. What more do you need to say? Benji, The Hunted. Didn't even realise this was in my collection. I'm, I'm assuming this belongs to my wife. That's the excuse I'm using and I'm sticking to it. I haven't seen it anyway. Uh, don't know how to pronounce this. Bikunmu or Bichunmu, Warrior of Virtue. Uh, yeah, I, I've not seen it. I watched the first 10 minutes once, um, but I was a bit tired, so I turned it off, and I've just not got around to watching it again, so I really need to, as with a lot of films in my collection. Uh, Big Lebowski, not seen this in years. When I, I, I watched this in my early 20s. I think I bought this in my early 20s. I remember it being one of the best Coen Brothers films. Um, I think maybe the sensibilities I have now in my mid-30s to the person I was in my mid-20s, I'm guessing this film probably won't have the same effect on me now as it did then. That being said, I do own it and my memories of it are that it was a fantastic film, very uh, cleverly scripted, very funny, although a bit pointless. Uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of one of them films that doesn't really amount to much but it's just so well scripted and so well kind of it's just, it's just, just the humor in it that's all I remember I just I just remember laughing um, an awful lot throughout it um, but it's very irreverent um, Big Miracle uh, rental copy I bought this this is a good film by the way um, it's not fantastic it's not gonna blow your mind or anything but um, if you've got kids and you want a, a nice decent family film to stick on this, you, you can't go f too far wrong with this. Um, I used to work at Blockbuster just before it shut down, and when they shut down, they sold off all their stock really cheaply. This is one of the one of the films that I bought during that period, um, which is a real sad reminder of my short time at Blockbuster. Um, Biloxi Blues picked this up from a charity shop a couple of weeks ago. I don't know why, because it's got Matthew Broderick's face all over the cover, and I'm not a Matthew Broderick fan, I've got to say. Um, there's something about him that I've just never clicked with. It's not to say he hasn't been in good films, but I hate Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I'm not of that school. Yeah, so, but I, I think it's Mike Nichols. It says here that it was directed by Mike Nichols. I'm guessing that's why I picked it up, and it was fairly cheap, so... I will get around to watching that at some point. Bird, I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan. I've got a lot of his films on DVD, uh, particularly the ones he's directed. Not seen this one yet, though. Um, I keep meaning to watch it, but it, it looks like quite a uh, 
solemn film and I think you've got to be in in the right mood for it so maybe one day um, Black Rain really good Ridley Scott film good cop thriller from the 80s um, kind of film that I wish Ridley Scott would make more of um, he needs a bit more quality control I think uh, currently in his career but if you haven't seen this check it out one of his good early films uh, Blade Runner fantastic one of the best science fiction films ever made this is the final cut and what is for me also the best cut of the film if you haven't seen this cut of the film check it out for me personally like I say I think this is the definitive cut of the film um, what have we got here Book of Eli uh, I've not made it a secret that I'm a Christian and anyone who's seen this film for that reason we'll know why it speaks to me and why I like it so much and beyond that it's just a really good kick-ass action film starring Denzel Washington what's not to like uh, Bottle Rocket this is Wes Anderson's first feature film did this before Rushmore a really funny film about some inept robbers um, they they break into this factory this building I can't, I can't remember what it is actually but they break in to, to steal all the money there but they're just so inept everything goes wrong and it's really humorous it's got that typical kind of quirky Wes Anderson style so if you like Wes Anderson if, if, if you recently watched Grand Budapest Hotel go back to the beginning this is where it started fantastic film uh, the original Bourne trilogy um, so Bourne Identity Bourne Supremacy and Bourne Ultimatum uh, Matt Damon's fantastic as Bond. This series really did reinvigorate invigorate the the Bond franchise. I think um, I don't think we would have got Casino Royale if we hadn't have had the Bond series. Really great series. Um, I don't have the Bond Legacy, but that's not because I don't like it. I think it's a really underrated film. One of the most underrated films, to be honest. I think it sits in well with the Bond franchise, and I really want to see. Um, more from Renner's character and hopefully one day a team up between Bourne and his character from the Bourne legacy uh, so yeah re really great series so far not a dud amongst them uh, <clears throat> a boy called dad I don't know how I came about owning this um, I've not seen it it's got some good reviews on the cover it's a British film I will get around to watching it at some point um, boyhood recently bought this watched it for the first time it's a really good film. I think it's a fantastic achievement in direction from Richard Linklater. I think he should get the Best Director Oscar this year. Um, just because it's such an, such an achievement to come back to the same cast each year over the course of 12 years and make a film. that And, and make a coherent film. Something that actually uh, makes sense. And... and, and doesn't just feel disjointed um i think that personally i mean i'm a director myself and i couldn't dream of, of putting something like that together and coming out with anything as coherent as, as what boyhood is so he should get the oscar for best director we'll see what happens um i think the ending of that film is, is a little bit it, it could have done with a bit more i think could have made a bit more of a, of a statement about i don't know the filmmakers outlook on life I think it, it didn't feel like there was any great conclusion there which I suppose is for many people one of the beauties of the film because um, you get to the end of, your, end of your teenage years and life doesn't just suddenly conclude or stop it carries on so there's an argument there to be made but uh, the boys are back uh, I've seen this once it was a good film um, I'm probably not gonna watch it again uh, it's from the director of Shine Shine was a fantastic film if you've not seen that with Jeffrey Rush check it out really great film this isn't on a par with that film but it's it's got some heart and it's it's nice enough um, Breach really good political thriller uh, I think Billy Ray who wrote and directed this is he doesn't get enough attention he doesn't get the attention that I think he deserves he made another film called Shattered Glass and he wrote the screenplay for state of play which i think is a really good adaptation of a bbc drama um yeah the, the guy's got talent and I, I if you're not seeing this check it out it's a really good film uh brick um 
for me, this is Ryan Johnson's best film. He's also responsible for Looper. I think just the dialogue in this film is fantastic. The characterizations are fantastic. Um, just the way it brings that kind of old gumshoe detective genre into the modern world and, and puts it within a school setting is really, it's, it's a stroke of genius. The film is brilliant, check it out. Uh, Bridges of Madison County, like, some, like I said, I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan. Check out my recent uh, top 10 Clint Eastwood directed movies. This is in it. Real fantastic work. Great performances from Eastwood and Meryl Streep, typically. Um, Bridget Jones's Diary. It's good. It's entertaining. It's it's all right. Um, yeah. A sequel. I, I don't think I'm going to watch this, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Brothers, fantastic film. Uh, very dark, very sombre. Y you're going to be in a bad way, I think, after watching this. But it ends on a, on for what for me, what is a real hopeful note. And it's it's really all about forgiveness, forgiving ourselves for our own sins, and and just there's a lot. If you've seen recently American Sniper, this is essentially. It deals with similar themes, but in a much, much better way. Um, and a fantastic performance by Tobey Maguire. Best of his career, without any doubt. Watch this film, it's brilliant. Really underrated and really underseen. Uh, Calendar Girls. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good film. It's a, it's, to be honest, I've never seen this all the way through from start to finish. I've seen it in parts. I've seen the whole film, but it's, it's been in blocks. Um, and I bought this recently because I would like to see it from start to finish as one complete film. Uh, but what I've seen of it, it's it's actually quite a good film. Uh, solid British film. Uh, Bright Star, haven't seen it. Um, it's got a few good quotes on there. And Jane Campion, I believe, is fairly good at that kind of thing. Um, the Candidate, uh, this was bought for me actually as, as a a present by a friend. I was in uh, HMV with him and he just he just bought it me because I said I wouldn't mind seeing it. I've not got around to watching it yet though, uh, so shame on me. Um, but Robert Redford is good. Captain America, First Avenger, one of my favourite Marvel films, mainly because Captain America is my favourite character. Um, not necessarily from the comic books because I've never really been into the Marvel comic books, but from the films, He's my favourite character, and that's a lot of that is down to Chris Evans' performance. And I just like the the old school kind of guy that he is. Um, that he he's the kind of guy who'll hold a door open for a, a woman. He won't swear around children, or, or well, he won't swear. Um, it's just I don't know. I just I like the old fashioned values that are instilled within him. Um, and I thought this film was really great, really underappreciated out of all the Marvel films. Um, second film, Winter Soldier, again for me, like I said before, is the best film so far that Marvel have put out. Uh, Centurion, this is uh, about the Ninth Legion, uh, not to be confused with the film that was called The Ninth Legion, I think. No, The Legion was it called? I think it was called The Legion. Um, this is the better of the two. This is essentially just a kick ass action film. Um, this is by uh, Neil Marshall who's famous obviously for Dog Soldiers and The Descent. This is just, if you come to this for story, then you're probably not gonna find what you're looking for. But if you come for it for, for just balls to the wall action, um, then there's, there's some good fun to be had here. Uh, Chasing Lanes, this was really the start of of the reconnaissance for Ben Affleck's career, really. This, this was, um, this, this is a fantastic film, a, a really great drama, just about... Cause the, two, the two characters in this, neither one of them is an evil person, a bad person. They just do bad things. They're, they're, they're caught in a situation and things just escalate. And I, and I like that aspect of the film, the fact that it's not trying to paint either one of them out to be a bad guy or the other one to be a hero. It's just saying, look, this is life things happen and th they get out of control and it's not necessarily because of any any great evil in a person it's just we need to accept more responsibility for our for our actions and and kind of 
nip it nip it in the bud while when we while we can uh, while it's happening rather than letting things get out of hand. It's it's a really great film anyway. Watch it. Um, and Changeling, one of Clint Eastwood's best films as director. Uh, I lent this to some friends recently, some good friends of mine, and they said that it nearly killed them. Uh, they just they couldn't handle it. Um, it it's just I, I won't I won't spoil it, but it's it's a fantastic film, really heart rending. Um, if 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 you're a parent, you'll understand why. Um, but great film, fine performance by Angelina Jolie. Um, Charlie Wilson's War. Again, Aaron Sorkin wrote this. He's my favourite writer. His presence is all over this film. It's directed by Mike Nichols. It's a really great film. Underappreciated, I think. Um, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Julia Roberts. Um, wh whenever I see her in a film, she's kind of just there. Um, when I want to see her on the poster or her name in the credits. But when I watch her in a film, I always think actually she's she is re a really good actress. Um, but I don't know, there's something about her that just never draws me into wanting to see a film with her in. But when I see a film with her in, I'm, I'm usually I'm usually quite open to it. I, I receive it well, so to speak. Um, but this this is a really good film. Um, fine performances from three leads, particularly Philip Seymour Hoffman, who I think was nominated for a Best Supporting Actor in this. I could be wrong. Uh, I could be wrong, uh, but if he didn't, he certainly deserved to. Excellent actor, brilliant script, wonderful film. Um, Shay, part one and two, Steven Soderbergh, I've not seen it, um, really want to, I'm a fan of Soderbergh, but I just, I need to be in the right mood when I decide to put this on. Um, Children of Men, I just hit myself in the eye with my DVD. And pretend that didn't happen and move on. Children of Men is, uh, for me, uh, the, the best film by Alfonso Cuaron. I think Gravity is seriously overrated. Um, this is his best film as far as I'm concerned. Technically brilliant and the story is, is really gripping. The character played by Clive Owen is just, it just really draws me in. I, and, and Michael Caine has some really wonderful scenes in this film as well. Fantastic film. Um, Chocolat, uh, it's it's all right. It's, it feels a bit like a puff piece, really. Just something light and frothy that you can stick on, and if you don't want to tax the brain a bit too much, I don't know. There are some moments in it that are that are a bit darker, and that I don't know, delve a bit deeper into the human condition. But for the most part, it's just it's just it's a bit of fluff, and I don't mind having it in my collection, but. I'm probably not going to rush to watch it anytime soon. Uh, Christmas Carol. This, for me, is my favourite version of the Charles Dickens story. I think what R Robert Zemeckis did with this film was fantastic. And I think what Jim Carrey did with the many roles he plays in this film is also fantastic. Um, yeah, really good film. Um, the only downside, I'd say, is that there are a few scenes in it that are clearly there for the 3D aspect of the film for when this was released at cinemas on 3D. Um, but beyond that, just the, the retelling of this story, it, it feels fresh. I've seen so many films, uh, film adaptations of the Christmas Carol story that they, it just never seems fresh anymore. You watch it and you feel like you're going through the motions. This is the first adaptation I had seen in an awful long time where I sat there and watched it and it all felt fresh to me. It's a really great film. Um, extended edition of Chronicles of Narnia, Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe. For me, this is a better version than the theatrical version. It's, a, it's got a little bit of a darker edge to it, um, and it's, it's quite good. It's, it's not in the same league as something like Lord of the Rings, but it is a good film. Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. Uh, this is the best of the Narnia films for me. Uh, it took a much darker tone. It felt a little bit more like kind of Lord of the Rings. Um, but yeah, it's a good film, good sequel, it improved on the first one, which is what you hope all sequels should do. Uh, the third one, Dawn of the Treader, on the other hand, didn't. It took a little bit of a, a bit of a dive in quality. I just it feels like a lot of the people in this are just going through the motions. Um, it's it's not a fantastic film. But it's it's entertaining enough. Oh, pardon me. It's entertaining enough. And, uh, it, I'd give it a watch again at some point, I imagine. Um, oh, really? I own Riddick? I own Riddick, apparently. Um, Cinderella, uh, classic Disney, what more do you need to know? 
Cinderella Man. This is one of the most underrated films of all time. It's probably Ron Howard's best film, as far as I'm concerned. Excellent film, a uh, true life story. Just, just watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Class Action, uh, another film I need to get around to seeing. I bought it. I think I have seen this on TV when I was very young. I can't remember a right lot about it, but uh, oh, Michael Apted. Same, it's directed by uh, Voyage of the Dawn Treaders, Michael Apted. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get around to watching that at some point. Uh, Cloud Atlas, again, uh, this, this was quite a divisive film. Um, divided people's opinions, I think. I fall into the camp of those who loved it. I think it's a great film. Um, probably the tone is a little bit mismatched in some places, um, but yeah, really great film. And I think the Wachowskis in particular are just... Everyone is still hung up on The Matrix, uh, which is admittedly a great film. The sequels, maybe not so much. But I still think they are really interesting filmmakers. And I'm really looking forward to Jupiter Ascending. And I'm, I know there's not a lot of people who probably say that, but I am. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I, I like them as filmmakers. And they make big budget Hollywood movies that are full of ideas, full of concepts, um, and that kind of that make you think that force you to, to have to think about your position on certain things. Um, so, yeah, I really like that film. Uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is probably, if, if, if you asked me or my wife what is a film that we kind of, is, is our film, what is the film we would sit down together and watch, it would probably be this. We, we love this film, it's brilliant. Shame about the sequel, which was Pants. Um, collateral, fantastic Michael Mann directed movie, uh, brilliant performance by Tom Cruise playing a villain, I think the only time he's ever played a villain, if I'm not mistaken, um, but yeah, great film. Company Men, uh, this, if you've seen Margin Call, um, this would make, I think it actually came out before Margin Call, but if you watch this right after Margin Call, it would sit very well with it. Um, this, this, this is kind of like the aftermath of the events of something like Margin Call, um, and this is just as good of a film as Margin Call. Really well done. Um, directed, written, and directed by John Wells from ER fame. I think he was a producer on West Wing as well. But yeah, it, really great film. Uh, and again, another great performance from Ben Affleck. Proof that he is not the actor a lot of people paint him out to be. Um, Count of Monte Cristo, uh, it's, it's a decent action flick, um, probably one of Jim Caviezel's better performances, uh, and, and I like Guy Pearce, so yeah, good solid Hollywood fun. Uh, Country Strong, I started watching this with my wife, and we both, I don't think she was in the right place at the time when we were watching it, and I... I'm not rushing to go back to it, let's put it that way, but um, I've kept hold of it because, who knows, maybe one day I'll be in the right mood. Courage and Fire, really good film. Uh, Edward Zwick directed it, and I think he's a very solid Hollywood director. Uh, I think when I see his name on, on the, the credits as a, as a director, it, I don't, I don't want to rush out and watch it, but I, I do kind of, it's one of them names where I see it and I think that's going to be a good film, that's going to be a solid film. It's reliable, very reliable, and this is proof of that. Um, Crash, fantastic film, I think. Um, really too much swearing in this film. This is one of them films where I sat there and I did notice the language, and I just thought, why do you need the F word, every other sentence. Um, so in that respect, it kind of ruined it a little bit for me, but not enough because this film is fantastic. Um, I think a lot of people, it's, it's become one of them films that is, it's become an easy target. A lot of people, it's, it's, it's fashionable now to hate it, I think. It's fashionable to say, oh, it should have been one best picture, Brokeback Mountain should have got it. But I haven't seen Brokeback Mountain, maybe it should have, but this, I thought, was thoroughly deserving of the best picture Oscar. Um, I think it was my favorite film that year, if I am not mistaken. Great film. Um, Crimson Tide, really good film, one of Tony Scott's best, has a scene in it, I believe, that was written by Quentin Tarantino, um, which is really noticeable, uh, but yeah, really good film. 
Um, the cross and the switchblade, I'm not seeing this yet. Uh, this is apparently a, an, an adaptation of a true story about a man who gave his life to Christ um, after being in gangs and things, and he may have he may have killed people, I don't know. Um, I, I could be getting it wrong, I could be getting my uh, conversion stories mixed up, but apparently it's, it's about a guy who came from a really hard life and did some bad things um, and, and, and turned his life around. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, um, one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, it's just from everything, every technical aspect, uh, the performances, the script, um, Ang Lee's best film for me. Um, and it did win the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film, which for me was a bit of a cop-out. It should have been in contention for Best Film, period. Um, excellent film. The Crucible, I haven't seen this yet, um, but I got it because of this man here, Daniel Day-Lewis, fantastic actor. Um, he doesn't put out that many films, but when he does, you're usually guaranteed to get something special. So, And I do like Winona Ryder. Um, She's had a bit of a, a, a comeback recently, um, although she's, she's still not headlining or anything, but she's, she's had a bit of a resurgence in her career, and I'm glad of that because I like her, and I will get around to watching this at some point. There's so many DVDs in my collection that I just haven't watched, and it's quite embarrassing. Um, I, just, I just buy DVDs and don't watch them. Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Um, this is my least favorite David Fincher film. That being said, it's still a really good film. Um, for me, it just doesn't have as much emotional impact as I would have liked it to have had. And it is essentially just um, what's that film called? Forrest Gump. It's just it's, it's kind of, and I think it's written by the guy who wrote Forrest Gump. But um, it, it does have that kind of feel to it. Only maybe not as good. Um, Curse of the Golden Flower. Uh, Zhang Yimou directed this, he did this after Hero and House of Flying Daggers. It kind of makes up a bit of a, a Wushu trilogy. This is probably the weakest of the three, but it's still, visually, it's a very strong film. The visuals on this are just gonna burn holes into your retinas, because it's just, it's insane. Uh, it's a visual feast. It is. So watch it. But check out House of Flying Daggers, because that's even better. Um, all my DVDs have just fallen down. Oh well, uh, Dangerous Minds, um, great performance by Michelle Pfeiffer, as I pointed out, I, I'm a very big fan of Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, this film doesn't do anything that a lot of other films haven't done before. We've seen so many films about teachers that go into bad schools and, and kind of clean the place up. Um, but it's good, and it's mainly down to Pfeiffer's performance. Uh, Daredevil, the director's cut. It's, it's quite good, actually. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's a guilty pleasure, I take pleasure from it, simple as. Um, you can argue whether it's a good or bad film or not. Um, I think the director's cut is actually quite a good film. The theatrical cut, not so much, but director's cut, watch it, it's good. Um, Dawn of the Dead remake, um, I think this was Zack Snyder's first film. Uh, there's a few bits in it that are a bit like, yeah, whatever. Um, but for the most part, as far as remakes go, this is really good and it, really scared the pants off me um, at the time that I saw it. I bought this recently, I've not seen it in a while, but I am going to get around to watching it again at some point. But I do remember it being quite good. Day After Tomorrow, um, it's a Roland Emmerich film, and like with any Roland Emmerich film, you pretty much get the same business. Um, famous landmarks will be destroyed. It's not his strongest film. It's not his weakest. That's all I can say. Um, <clears throat> Dead Man Walking. This film is powerful. Man, this film is powerful. It's just, it's about a guy on death row and this nun goes to see him and it's essentially all about her trying to get him to just confront his guilt, just to own up to what he did and to take responsibility for it. This isn't a film about getting him off death row. Don't be under any illusions about where this film is heading. This is all about getting him to just take responsibility and I think it's a great message it's a fantastic film it's very powerful um, but if, if you can't handle strong emotional stuff maybe not the film for you but for me fantastic and directed by Tim Robbins as well from Shawshank Redemption um, I'd love to see more films from him uh, The Debt 
Uh, again, one of my uh, blockbuster um, going bust purchases. Uh, yep, uh, good film. Um, a lot better than I was expecting it to be. I thought it'd be quite dull, but no, I found it really gripping. Um, Helen Mirren's really good in it, Sam Worthington, and of course, uh, I always forget her name, Jessica Chastain. Don't know why her name is so hard for me to remember, but it is. But she's really great in this film, as she is in everything. Um, Deep Impact, you know, it's meteorites coming towards the Earth, and they try and stop it. Uh, you get pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, <laughs> Deep Rising. This is probably Stephen Summers' best film. It's cheap, it's nasty, it's rubbish, but it's so much fun. Uh, if you just want a fun time, Deep Rising is the way to go. Uh, Despicable Me, really good. I don't have the sequel. Uh, I will probably get around to getting it at some point, but this was better than I was anticipating it being from the trailers. Um, yeah, really good, heartfelt, animated film. I'm really going to have to speed up because this I'm only down, on my third shelf down and I've got another three do, to do. Uh, so this video is going to be very long. I do apologise for that. Um, the Devil's Backbone, Guillermo del Toro. Did this before Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, really good ghost story. Uh, not quite as breathtaking as Pan's Labyrinth, but still very, very good. Uh, I think some of the special effects maybe let it down a little bit, but... Ooh! Uh... Should I own up to this? Should I show you that I own this? Will my credibility, such as it is, be ruined if I show you? Did you hear about the Morgans? I... I like watching this with my wife, okay? I'm not... I... Uh, Die Hard! Yes! Man film! Die Hard. Uh, one of the best action films of all time, period. Die Hard 2, not as good, pretty much repeats the first film but it's still entertaining um we got back on track with die hard with a vengeance which was by the same director john mctiernan uh the ending is a little bit weak but everything up to that is really strong very good action film uh the fourth film for me underrated i think it's very good um i think the the 15 rated cut is better than the cut that was released in cinemas um, but I, I, I still found it entertaining. I, I, thought, I thought it was John McClane enough for me, um, although some people didn't think that. Um, I don't own the fifth film because I thought it was absolute garbage. Uh, it just... It was mind-numbing how bad that film was, actually. Um, Disturbia, essentially a remake of Rear Window. Really good. Uh, lots of great action. Good performance, actually, from Shia LaBeouf. Um, which you can't often say, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a good film. And Django Unchained, possibly Tarantino's best film. Um, uh, don't know. It's uh, Inglorious Bastards and Kill Bill. I do really like, though they do have their weak points that, that really stand out to me. Whereas this one can't honestly think of any, so possibly Tarantino's best. Uh, d domestic Disturbance, uh, really good to see Vince Vaughn in a villain role, um, being quite creepy, and it's only a 12, so you're not going to get anything too, you know, too harsh in there, but it's just a, it's a nice little thriller, a uh, good kind of, as it says, an unforgettable cat and mouse thriller. I'd agree with that, it's quite good. Johnny Darko, fantastic film, one of my favourites. Um, it's it's a film that is very much open to interpretation. Um, it doesn't spoon feed you everything. Uh, it's very weird. Mary McDonnell gives a fantastic performance, supporting performance as Donnie Darko's mother, um, as do plenty of other actors, Drew Barrymore, um, Patrick Swayze. But yeah, a really good film. Put Jake Gyllenhaal on the map. Um, but yeah, just really, really great film. Uh, Down in the Valley, oh my goodness, if there's a film that is probably underseen more than any other, for me it's this, it's just, this is a fantastic film and this got some 
I don't know, it got some bad reviews when it came out. It also got, it got, it got, also got a, a lot of really good reviews, but I, I sit on the fence of, of the really good reviews. This, this is a fantastic film. Edward Norton in this is brilliant. Um, if you haven't heard of this film, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, but if you haven't seen it, check it out. Excellent film. Uh, Driving Aphrodite, that's my wife's. I've got no compulsion to watch it. Sorry, Annie. Um, Duplicity, I think that Tony Gilroy is underrated as a director. He wrote the scripts for all of the Bourne films. He directed The Bourne Legacy. And I think... Um, I think he's underrated uh, as a director. I think he did a wonderful job directing his own script with The Barn Legacy. Um, those characters are essentially his. I know they're Robert Ludlum's in the books, but he completely revamped the books. He made them his own. Um, and I think he did a wonderful job with this as well. Uh, a really good kind of thriller, heist type thriller, con man type thriller. It's, it's good. It's kind of Ocean's Eleven meets the bank job. Um, Good film. Uh, Edward Scissorhands, Tim Burton's best film. Lots of heart, really good fairy tale, modern day fairy tale, retelling of Beauty and the Beast in a way. Uh, great film. Ed Wood, another great Tim Burton film. Uh, this is Edward Scissorhands and Ed Wood are like early collaborations between Tim Burton and Johnny Depp, and they're still their best collaborations. Really great, solid, quite straight laced film for Burton, really. Um, and one of the best films about Hollywood, one of the best films about the movie industry. Uh, highly recommended. Um, <laughs> Alexa, I'm not gonna try and defend this, but <clears throat> if you go into this watching it as though it was a pilot for a TV series, I think there's some enjoyment to be had. Uh, Emerald City, not seen it, picked it up cheap from a charity shop. Um, Got Nicole Kidman in it, how bad can it be? Uh, Emma, again, not seen it. Uh, this is my wife's, really, um, but I'm not against watching it. Gwyneth Paltrow's good, and, you know, I, I do, but the Weinsteins produced it, so that's usually a sign of quality. Um, Emperor and the Assassin, again, I've not seen it. Uh, bought this because of Gong Li. I got into a phase where I was into um, anything with Gong Li and haven't seen this. Enchanted, brilliant family film, uh, one of the best family films that I can keep going back to and just watching again and again. And that's in no small part down to Amy Adams, who I think is a fantastic actress. She put herself on the map with this film, really, just because of the range she shows in this. Um, but also James Marsden, who I think is an extremely underrated actor. He he does some really good comedy in this film. Um, I think James Marsden's a great actor, and I, I want him to... I don't know, he's just, he's never quite landed, has he? Um, and I, I want him to, because, yeah, it was really good. Uh, great film. Ender's Game, um, solid kind of children's sci-fi. It's kind of, I don't know, Harry Potter in space, I guess, but without the magic. Um, it's a good film, and it has a darker ending than you might expect. Um, a bit more, a bit more of a ballsy ending than you might expect. Good film. Um, they're probably not one I'll watch again and again, but I'm glad I've seen it. End of Watch. Not seen it. Uh, bought it on DVD just because I've heard so much about it. And I just noticed a picture on the back here, actually, of... Um, I can never remember her name. Anna Kendrick, uh, who I think is a really great actress. Um, <laughs> I don't remember her being in this. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna get around to watching it and David Ayer who directed this is doing the Suicide Squad film So even more of a reason for me to come and get this in my DVD player Enduring Love uh, Really good British film strong performance from Reese Siffins um, and a pre-bond Daniel Craig Roger Mitchell directed this actually he's responsible for changing lanes as well He's done quite a few good films and he did Notting Hill I believe a uh, very good director and I think it's it. I'm surprised we've not seen more from him. I'm surprised he's not more well known, actually. Equilibrium, uh, guilty pleasure, if ever there was one. Um, it's a bit hokey in parts. That it doesn't quite have the budget it would like to have. 
Uh, but it's 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 all right. It's a decent film, good action film. Emily Watson's really good in it. She has quite a, a touching scene, actually, one of the most poignant scenes in the film. Uh, really good. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. This is Michelle Gondry's best film, as far as I'm concerned. Brilliant performance by Jim Carrey. Proof that he is a dramatic actor as much as he is a comedic actor. Uh, and Kate Winslet is great as well. Uh, fantastic film. Um, everything must go. Uh, it's it's good film. It's a strong performance by uh, Will Ferrell, um, but th there's a few bits in it that are a bit yeah, a bit ropey for me. Uh, but but it is a good film. It's solid drama. Not as good as Stranger Than Fiction, which is my favourite Will Ferrell film. Fantastic film. Failure to launch. This is during the phase when Matthew McConaughey was just leaning against something in all of his film posters. Uh, I haven't seen this film, I have no urge to, it's my wife's. Um, Fair Game, good political thriller by Doug Lyman who directed the first Bourne film and the recent Edge of Tomorrow which was fantastic. This is a really good political thriller. Uh, great performance by Naomi Watts, she's always good. Um, Falling Down, absolutely fantastic. I think this is Joel Schumacher's best film. Um, it's just, this is, it just starts off with a guy who just, he's caught in a traffic jam and he just flips and he, he leaves his car and, and then the rest of the film is about the, the cops trying to catch up with him because he does some pretty bad things. But you relate to this guy, all of the things that really tick him off throughout the film are, are things that I guarantee you will have been ticked off by yourself in life. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just, you really sympathise with him. It's a really, really good thriller. Uh, and I really wish Joel Schumacher would make more films as good as this. Uh, Fast and the Furious, um, it's essentially point break. Um, but with cars and not as good um, but because of Fast Five and Fast and Furious 6 which were really great action films I went back and got all the other Fast and Furious films um, it's, it's, it's not as bad as I'm making out it's, it's actually quite a decent action film uh, the second one more of the same but without Vin Diesel and maybe maybe not quite as good um, the third one, the second one I would say is actually the weakest of the Fast and Furious films. A lot of people would say this one is, Tokyo Drift, but I, I thought it was a lot of fun to be had in this one. Um, I don't appear to have the fourth one. Uh, it's, uh, I think I've got a digital copy of that actually, uh, which it's, it's alright, it's quite good. Um, but Fast Five, excellent action film. Never thought I'd say that about a Fast and the Furious movie, but when I saw this I was like, oh my goodness. I actually highly rate a Fast and the Furious movie, but there you go. But it made me reevaluate re the franchise, and Fast and Furious 6 is just as good as Fast 5, I think. Um, a Few Good Men, Aaron Sorkin script, what more do you need to say? Brilliant film. Fight Club, David Fincher's best film, has a lot to say about consumer society, um, and Edward Norton and Brad Pitt give outstanding performances. Brilliant visuals, technically brilliant film, um, yeah stunning the fighter i i a lot of people kind of jumped on the bandwagon of saying this was essentially just the wrestler light um and i am not one of those people i think this film is better than the wrestler i think it has more to say than the wrestler um it's a great true life story and the performances by both Wahlberg and uh, Christian Bale, especially Christian Bale, are absolutely brilliant. Amy Adams again is on form as she always is, um, she's brilliant in this film, it's just it's just an outstanding film. Um, David O. Russell, one of his best. Finding Neverland, um, <laughs> see this film is so good but when I watch it it's, it saddens me because I see something like this and I think Johnny Depp, you can do more. You can you can deliver a nuanced performance that doesn't require stupid makeup or high-pitched voices. He needs to be making more films like this. This film is outstanding. And Mark Forster is a really underrated director. He made this, he made Monsters Ball, he made Stranger Than Fiction, which is one of my favorite films. Uh, he made the, the recent World War Z, which despite all the uh, behind the scenes difficulties they had in that film turned out to be really good. Um, yeah, just one of my favourite directors actually, if, if I'm honest, um, and, and one of the 
probably the most unsung directors, I think. Despite, when you look at his resume, uh, he's got some pretty impressive films on there, this being one of them. <clears throat> um, 500 Days of Summer, a great chick flick for guys. Uh, Mark Webb does a fantastic job of putting all the elements together. The script is really good and the performances by uh, the two leads. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zoe Deschanel are really great. Um, it's, it's a really cleverly written film, I think, and it has a lot, a lot to say about modern romance, modern relationships. Uh, Flight Plan, um, just a good thriller, um, primarily the, 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 because of Jodie Foster, really. It's her performance that elevates this. Uh, yeah, good film. Um, Fly Away Home, one of my wife's favourite films. This is her DVD. Uh, it took a long time to get me to watch this, I didn't really fancy it, but it is actually a really good story. I think the ending is probably let down a little bit, it doesn't, I think that everything that builds up to the ending is better. Uh, I, I don't know, I just, for me I felt, I don't know, it just, it just didn't have the emotional punch at the ending that I wanted it to have, but that's not a downer on the film because the rest of the film is actually quite fantastic as, as family films go. This, this, is, this is one of the better family films you're going to come across and I can understand why my wife likes it. Um, following, this is Christopher Nolan's first film. Check out my review for this. I've, I've put it up on my channel. Um, everything I want to say about it, I said there. Uh, ah, for love's sake, this is a film that I actually acting. Um, I'm in some of the final scenes. Uh, it's a Christian feature film and it's about a, a family that was torn apart after the death of a father. Um, it's a true story. I, I, I know the director. Um, I got to know him through this actually. Um, this, this is based on his life and I highly recommend it. Um, it is a really great film as I'm not just saying that just because I'm in it or because I've had an association with it. Uh, I just, I, I think it's a, a really well told story. It's very low budget and I think with that in mind, judging it on those budgetary terms, this is one of the best films you're going to find of that budget. And it, it doesn't, it's not like your American Christian feature films that, um, well, just listen to what go to my top 10 worst movies of 2014 and look at what i said about god's not dead um <clears throat> this does not suffer from those kind of problems it's very good very well made um and if you want to see me in a film go and watch it anyway i've plugged that for too long so let's move on um the fountain uh great darren aronofsky film one of his most underappreciated films probably my favourite of his, uh, really great film, outstanding visuals, Hugh Jackman gives a, a really great performance, um, this was the first time I saw him in something um, other than a Wolverine related film where I thought actually damn this guy can act, so yeah check it out, really great film. The Fox and the Hound, uh, really quite dark actually for a Disney film, um, but very good, yeah. Uh, what more can I say? Classic Disney. Uh, Freaky Friday, the remake of Freaky Friday, uh, directed by Mark Waters, who I actually think is quite good when it comes to chick flick type movies. He did Mean Girls, which I think is good. Um, he did, what's that one with um, Mark Ruffalo and Heaven Can Wait, I think. Um, not a great film, so I'm going to blow your mind, but just for what it is, it was handled quite well, and this is the same. Um, I think Matt Waters is a safe pair of hands for a film like this. Um, Freedom Land, haven't seen it, need to get around to watching it. Freedom Writers, haven't seen it, I'm not sure I need to get around to watching it. Um, I can't say I've heard tremendous things about it. Uh, Frost Nixon, really great film, tight. Great script, uh, fantastic performance by Michael Sheen. Uh, I always forget, I always want to call him Michael Shannon, um, but I know it's not Michael Shannon. Michael Sheen, great actor, um, got such range. Michael Sheen actually is is just really impressive in everything that he does. Even Twilight, um, he's probably a, a standout in Twilight to be honest. Of which there are not many, uh, but yeah, that's that's a really good film. Um, Frozen. Fantastic Disney film. I think it's quite underrated. Uh, I, I know that sounds stupid because so many people love Frozen, but just talking about 
just within the the, the film world um there's i don't know I've, I've i've heard a lot of sniffy kind of movie folk kind of say that oh well, yeah it's, it's a good disney film but it's not really one of the best it doesn't deserve the hype i think it does deserve the hype i think this is fantastic for anyone who's got little girls um daughters and wants to show them something other than the typical standard interpretation that we get of female characters in films it shows us that women can be strong without having to just without everything they do being about getting a man um and it's just it's, it's a good story about uh, the, the the bond between sisters being stronger than like i say the bond between um a woman who's just met a guy five minutes ago and thinks that she loves him uh, really good um bought this last week frozen ground so i don't know if it's any good we'll get around to watching it the game excellent film kind of like a christmas carol like a subverting the christmas carol story in a way um really good quite dark michael douglas is fantastic as is sean penn um gangster squad very underrated i think so many of the reviews for this film were bad it uh, i i know people who's, who think this is terrible who rated it one of the worst films of the year i think this film is excellent i think it's real good fun it's hard hitting it's it's got some really good action sequences in it some really nice performances i think the production design is stunning um it doesn't do anything new that we haven't seen in films such as la confidential or the untouchables but I'm not bothered um, by unoriginality, providing I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. And when I watched this, I enjoyed what I saw. Um, Garden State, really good directorial debut by Zach Braff. Um, I've not seen this in quite a while. I don't know if um, I would still enjoy it as much as I did when it first came out, but I think Natalie Portman is fantastic in it. She always is. Um, yeah, good, good story about the loss of a loved one and just coming to terms with, with, with family dynamics, I guess. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, real great smash hit from last year. Last year, Unexpected um, proof that Marvel seemingly can't do any wrong at the, at the minute. Uh, Get Shorty, um, fantastic script. John Travolta at his best. Um, Rene Russo is really good in this as well. Um, she's, it's worth pointing out that she's she's fantastic in the recent Nightcrawler. If you haven't seen that film, go and check it out. She's brilliant in it. She should have been nominated for a Best Supporting Actress Oscar. Well, Best Actress Oscar actually, because she's she's the main female performer in that, and she's in it quite a lot. So, yeah, um, Barry Sonnenfeld probably probably his best work. Ghost World. I haven't seen this film in a long time. Uh, but when I did see it the first time around, I thought it was fantastic, really humorous, very well written film. Steve Buscemi is brilliant in it. Uh, I do need to get around to watching this actually um, again at some point because from what I remember, it was it was a fantastic film. Uh, G.I. Jane, a little a little underappreciated. It's it's not fantastic. It's not going to rock your world, but it does have some some good things to say. Demi Moore gives a pretty good performance in it, and it is. Um, pretty well directed by Ridley Scott. G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra and G.I. Joe, Retaliation. They're rubbish films, but I can stick them on and just have them on in the background and be entertained by them, providing I don't want to think too much. Um, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. I thought the Swedish version was better. I probably won't watch this film again and I won't watch the Swedish one again just because of how hard they are. Um, I only watched this really because I, I was interested to see how the Americans would reinterpret it, how David Fincher would reinterpret the story. Um, like I say, the Swedish one's better, um, but it's it's a very hard film to watch. There's some really graphic stuff in this that, um, yeah, if, you, if you've got a if you're quite squeamish, not the film for you. And because I watched The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which I do think is a good film, it has some very interesting things to say about society's views towards women. Um, I can't fully endorse the way that it expresses those views, but nevertheless, um, the, it does have interesting things to say. So I did want to watch the sequels. Um, I saw the girl who played with fire which was the second one um which again was a good film it's got a lot of interesting things to say uh, i don't own it on dvd 
um, but I, I've got a girl who kicked the hornet's nest, picked it up cheap, I've not got around to watching it yet, just because I feel like I should finish this trilogy. Um, like I say, it's, it's, it's great filmmaking, but it's not it's not repeat viewing filmmaking. I, once I've watched Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, I probably won't watch them films ever again. Uh, Gladiator, one of the best films ever made, I think. Um, I, it's just a, a fantastic action film, one of the best action films. Russell Crowe is brilliant in it, he's never been better, as is Joaquin Phoenix. Um, Ridley Scott, this is easily one of his top five films of all time. Uh, yeah, what, what more do you need to say? Uh, very quotable dialogue in there as well. Um, Gone Maybe Gone, uh, fantastic film. Ben Affleck, did he write this as well? Yes, he did. So Ben Affleck did the script to this and he directed it. It was the first film that he directed and it is brilliant. Um, just really strong, hard-hitting film, some grim stuff in it. Um, like I say, again, not an easy watch, but brilliant performance by Casey Affleck. Um, great film. Uh, Good Night and Good Luck, uh, directed by George Clooney, and I think he did the screenplay. Yes, he wrote the screenplay as well. Um, really good film about news media, about the denigration of the news media. Is that the right word? Do I even know what denigration means? The, just basically, just the way the news media is pandering to the masses, and um, this this is about... Oh, it's got, um, it's got Jeff... Br Sorry, just uh, reading the back. I, I get caught up in things when I see when I see stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting that Jeff Daniels is in this, um, just because he he would obviously go on to star in the newsroom, the Aaron Sorkin TV series. Um, but yes, uh, really great film. Uh, if you like the newsroom, actually, you'll probably like this. It's really good. Got some interesting things to say. Goodwill Hunting, one of my favourite films, probably in my top 10. I think I did put it in my top 10 when I did my top 100, which you can check out on my channel. Uh, directed by Gus Van Sant, who I think is a little overrated for, for the most part, but I would say this is his best film. But it hinges primarily on the script by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, and the central performance by Matt Damon, and Robin Williams as well. Robin Williams gives a fantastic performance here. The scene from the, from the cover, actually, where they sat on the bench, is just breathtaking, absolutely brilliant scene, and there's so many. Uh, it's a very dialogue heavy film, and that's what I love about it. Really brilliant character piece. Uh, Gorillas in the Mist, a really good film from what I remember. I've not seen it in an awful long time. Uh, Sigourney Weaver gives a great central performance, and it's it's it it it, it was quite an important issue, I think, to, to touch on um, and to make a film about. Really worthy, I guess. Um, Gran Torino, Clint Eastwood's best film, cracking performance, cracking story, brilliant direction from Eastwood, what more do I need to say? Green Hornet, very underrated, I found this film hilarious, I thought this film was so funny, uh, it's got one of the best fight scenes in it, best comedy fight scenes, um, yeah I love it, I'd have loved a sequel to this and it's very visually inventive as well, really good film, really good comic book fun. Superheroes with green in the title seem to be quite underrated, I think I don't think there's anything wrong with Green Arrow. I think it's not one of the best superhero films, but I do think it gets far too much flack thrown at it than it deserves. I think it's strong, I think it's solid superhero fun, um, and I've watched it a fair few times, and I really don't see what all the fuss is about, to be honest, um, with regards to people complaining about how bad it is. Uh, there are much worse films, like Catwoman. Um, Green Lantern, First Flight, it's an animated movie, DC animated movie, uh, very good, um, quite a strong effort. Uh, Lauren Montgomery directed this actually, and she, she's she got her name as director on some of the best of the DC animated universe movies, uh, this being one of them. Um, the Green Mile, uh, a Frank Darabont film, great director, director of the Shawshank Redemption. This isn't as good as the Shawshank Redemption, but it is a strong film, it is a quite hard hitting film in parts um, and it's just some really great performances uh, highly recommend it watch it and the green zone this is paul greengrass doing a war film it's essentially born as a war film um, that's the way it's marketed anyway it's not really true but it is a great war film it's i like the way it's shot um, the performances are really great it, it probably doesn't go anywhere you don't expect it to go but it's it's just it races along. Um, it's it's it deserves to have been watched by a lot more people than actually watched it. Gross Point Blank. Uh, just 
for me, John Cusack's best film. This is uh, directed by George Armitage. It's about a hitman who goes back to his high school reunion. And, and it's as funny as that sounds. Um, it's, it's, it's really great, it just really works. It's got drama in it, it's got comedy, it's got some really great fight sequences in it. Um, British film uh, called Grow Your Own. Uh, we just we saw this uh, I think in it was either in a charity shop or somewhere and it looked interesting. It's got some actors in it that that I kind of highly rate um, and yeah it was it was all right. Uh, it's not gonna set the world on fire. It's just it's it's, it's an interesting drama. Could have gone places that it didn't um, unfortunately um, and in in some respects it went places that. We didn't know it would. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's all right. Check it out. Um, Half Nelson, really good film. Great performance by Ryan Gosling. Uh, it ends on a joke, which I just found hilarious. And yeah, it's just it's it's dangerous minds, but kind of subverted in a way. Um, the Happening. Uh, this is a film people really like to rag on. People have really got the knives out for M. Night Shyamalan, have had for quite some time, particularly since Lady in the Water, but kind of really since The Village as well. Um, I thought this film was quite good. I thought in moments it was tense where it needed to be, in moments it was humorous where it, where it was trying to be. Um, I, I just thought it was let down by the, the ending. I thought uh, it was a bit of a cop-out uh, in, the, in the final moments. But beyond that, I thought this is a, a really good film and I don't really under, fully understand people's hatred for it. Um, films like uh, Last Airbender, I understand. After Earth wasn't fantastic. But yeah, I, th I think they jumped on the Shyamalan hating bandwagon a little bit too soon, really. Happy Feet. Uh, it's Dancing Penguins in it, really. Um, yeah. Uh, Hard Eight. This is Paul Thomas Anderson's first feature film. It's got a lot of his hallmarks. Um, it's got a lot of the actors in there that he's commonly worked with. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a really good film. It's, it feels like a Tarantino film in many ways. Um, the the dialogue and the just just the way it's shot, the way it comes together. Um, it's, it's not his strongest film. Uh, it's it's actually actually one of his weakest, but. It's still better than the majority of uh, first-time filmmakers' movies. Um, Harry Potter, uh, Philosopher's Stone, a little bit dull, drags on a little bit too long. Um, it's mostly just set up, really. Uh, I wasn't that interested in this franchise after this film. Um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is pretty much a rehash. We can't, it feels like we're going through the same motions that we did in the first film. Again, it's it's not a bad film by any stretch of the imagination, neither is the, f the first one. Um, but really, the, the brilliance of these films, these first two films, if there is any, comes out really much later in the franchise, when we realise just how much has actually been set up in these first two films that we didn't realise would would become important later on in the Harry Potter story. And it's only on reflection, it's only going back to these films after the whole franchise has come out that you realise that actually there's, there's some really clever stuff in them. But on the whole, as far as Harry Potter goes, these first two films, a little bit dull really. Um, the Prisoner of Azkaban, this is the film really that perks my interest in Harry Potter. It's, it's the one where I thought, actually, this franchise has potential. This this franchise could go somewhere interesting, and that's down to Alfonso Cuarón. Really, um, it's it's a much da much dark tone in this film, but very very interesting story. Very uh, th th just the mechanics of the story are, are, are used very well. Uh, there's a time travel element and things, um, which I may have just ruined for people who haven't seen it. But if you haven't seen it, then come on, get a grip. <coughs> it's been like what ten years. <coughs> So, uh, yeah, Goblet of Fire, not as good as Prisoner of Azkaban, but better than the first two. Um, there's a quite a touching moment when, um, what's his face? What's he called? Edward from Twilight dies, basically. Um, Order of the Phoenix, for me, the best Harry Potter film in the franchise. It has 
for me, what is the best moment, which is when Harry Potter tells uh, Voldemort that he actually feels sorry for him, um, despite the fact that he's 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 being killed in this moment, and and he has. I don't know. There's, there's there's something about that. There's something about being able to look into the face of your enemy, and instead of being filled with hate, being filled with pity. Um, and for me, that was the strongest moment of the entire Harry Potter franchise. And this is the strongest film in the Harry Potter franchise for me personally. Um, Half Blood Prince. The title was a bit wasted on the film, I think, because it's, it's, it does the Half Blood Prince element. Um, I mean, I've not read the books, um, but certainly in the film, it didn't really play a strong enough part for me. It, it seemed to be, it's like they didn't really know what to do with it. It's just, it's just there. Um, but it's, it's an all right film, it's entertaining. Deathly Hallows Part 1, uh, good setup, but you kind of feel like really this, this is just helping us get to the final confrontation it's still a good film uh there's a lot in it a lot, a lot of meat that you don't find in some of the other harry potter films uh, i don't actually own deathly hallows part two not because i didn't like it just because i've not got around to buying it yet um but it's 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 a it's a strong film um harsh times bought this primarily because of christian bale still not got around to watching it it's a david ayer film um so yeah, I seem to have a habit of owning DVDs directed by David Ayer, but I haven't watched, such as End of Watch. Um, so I might do a double bill of this and End of Watch at some point. <clears throat> Heat, one of the best crime thrillers ever made, period, and probably the strongest influence on my favourite film, The Dark Knight, for director Christopher Nolan. Um, Hellboy, the director's cut, uh, very good, really like it, and... It saddens me that we're probably never going to get a third film in the franchise because I'd have loved this to have been a trilogy. I'd love to see <clears throat> the everything that really is gets built up throughout the first two films. Which brings me to Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, which I think is the superior of the two films. Really good fun, great action films, some great creature designs in it, some really good monster stuff, which is what Guillermo del Toro excels at. Um, <clears throat> Hercules... Uh, bit of a, a, an underrated Disney film really. I think it's a really strong Disney film, Disney animated film, before they went uh, with computer animations, hand-drawn stuff. Uh, yeah, one of, the, one of their last kind of true classics, I think. Hero, uh, this is, I got this in Japan, so this is the Japanese version, so I don't understand anything it says on the back, um, and I have trouble navigating the menus when I get to it, but when I eventually get to the film, Really good film. The visuals in it, absolutely stunning. Uh, the colour coding that's used to tell the story, uh, the different um, from different people's interpretations of it, it's just it's just fantastic. And it's kind of like Ra uh, Rashomon. It uses that same kind of technique. It's a variation on the technique used in Rashomon. Really good film. His uh, Girl Friday. If you want to see dialogue that's fast and witty and makes you have to kind of rewatch it again just to pick up things that you didn't catch the first time around. This is a film that will do that. Great film, brilliant script. Uh, Hitchcock, still in cellophane, not seeing it. Be interesting watching it. Uh, Clint Eastwood, Heartbreak Ridge, again, not seeing it. Bought it because it's a film directed by Clint Eastwood. Um, yeah, I really want to get around to watching that. Uh, the Hoax, uh, very good film. Uh, Richard Gere gives a good central performance in it as a man who seemed very conflicted. Um, it doesn't seem to kind of it gets to the point where he's so caught up in this hoax that he's putting on that I don't know I think even he starts to believe it in the end and it's just it's a really good character study really good film uh, Lassie Halstrom directed this um, yeah one of, one of his finer efforts I think and Holiday a uh, very good film uh, it's it's a it's a classic in in the best sense of the word um, it's a black and white film Cary Grant gives a really good performance as does Catherine Hepburn um, it's just it's just a nice story. It's, it feels like theatre really because it all takes place in essentially one location But um, so it's, it doesn't really feel very cinematic But if you just want to see two actors at the height of their careers uh, Just just really bouncing off each other then th this is a really great film to watch uh, Home on the range haven't seen it uh, picked it up cheap. Uh, it's a Disney film. Uh, we'll get around to watching it at some point Heart and here's a who I really love this film. I think I just think it's it's 
it's a very funny film it's got a lot of heart um there's a, a good central theme throughout about the smallest things often having the greater value um or certainly just as much value as as those we we deem to be bigger and and, and better just yeah just a nice film that i'd really like to put on with with my daughter when when she's a little bit older uh hotel for dogs i think they picked this up as a, an ex rental from blockbuster when i when i left got it for about 25p um obviously that's not the cover uh but yes yeah, it's, it's an all right family film again i think i, I bought that knowing that a daughter was on the way and we'd need some more family films at some point. It's it's not a bad film, it's all right. Hot Fuzz, really funny. Um, the only film ever in that has had um, a, a piece of blasphemy in it that actually made me laugh. I couldn't help but laugh um, when, the, when the priest uses the Lord's name in vain, um, which made me feel rather guilty, but it's, it's, it's quite an achievement, that's all I can say. It's, it's a very funny film, very funny film. Um, ours, uh, picked this up recently, watched it. Paul Walker's best performance. It's a very low budget film. Uh, you, you can tell at times that the, the sh the, 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 there is a struggle there for the filmmakers to to get something out of, out of the budget that they had, but it's a really strong film, has some really gripping moments in it. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just really well played. It's a good swan song for for Paul Walker. It's, it, it feels it feels nice to know that he got this out, a film like this out before he passed away. Um, if if he has anything in his legacy other than the Fast and the Furious films, then then this film is one to be remembered. I think um, House of Flying Daggers, my favourite Zhang Zhang Jimu film, if I can pronounce that right. Uh, just beautiful to look at in every every sense of the word. Um, and, and just yeah, beautiful performances. It's it's a it's a, basically a love triangle, um, and it's it's it feels very Shakespearean in many ways. It's just it's just really really good. Um, I just it's been a while since I've seen this actually, but it's it's definitely it's very close to to being on par with uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. There's there's uh, there's very little that separates those two films. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, once again Matthew McConaughey leaning against someone in a poster. Haven't seen it, no desire to. Thank you very much. Um, how's, uh, how's my next? How to Train Your Dragon, a uh, very good film, was very surprised by this actually. Uh, this is yeah, DreamWorks did this one. Never been that big on Shrek, I thought the first two were, were okay, were, were reasonable films, um, but DreamWorks haven't really I think, I think um, actually their first film, Prince of Egypt, is still their best animated film. That is a brilliant film. Um, but this, this is a, a close second um, as far as their animated work goes. Hugo, um, great family film, a really touching story, has a lot to say just about, um, I don't know, just the, the legacy we leave behind and, and just the difference you can make in people's lives uh, just by just by being kind, really. I just, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a really good film, really good family film. Some wonderful performances in there. Hulk, Ang Lee's Hulk, the first version, I think is underrated. I think Eric Banner did a wonderful job in the lead role. It's probably a bit too sombre for, for some people, for most people, in fact. But I like what Ang Lee did with this. Um, uh, he, yeah, he treated the source material with respect, I think. And it's, it's a good, solid film. Uh, <coughs> Incredible Hulk, obviously Edward Norton um, was I think more in line with the, the Hulk we knew from the TV series, does a good job, it's a shame he didn't return but then again we wouldn't have got Mark Ruffalo who I think is probably the best Hulk we've had, um, but yeah it's a good action film, uh, yeah, yeah that's it really, it's just it's not going to blow you away but um, as far as Marvel movies goes it's, it's kind of, it's that one you stick on when you, when you want to see a good chunk of action, that's, that's this one. Um, the Hunter, I've heard a lot of good things about it, but I've not seen it yet. I do want to get around to watching it. Uh, the Hurricane, for me, Denzel Washington's best performance. I love this film, it's absolutely fantastic, really touching, and at some points it does make me cry. Uh, Hurt Locker, saw this at the cinema, not watched the DVD since buying it, but um, very good performance by Jeremy Renner. Uh, brilliant film by Catherine Bigelow. She beat her ex-husband, of course, um, to the 
Best Director Oscar because Avatar was nominated in, in the same group of films um, when this was. Uh, but not that that really means a right lot. But uh, this, yeah, it's just, it's just, it, it's well deserved, I think. I think Catherine Bigelow did a very good job on this. Ichi, um, or Ichi, I don't know, <laughs> don't know how you pronounce that. Um, but yeah, not watched it. We'll get around to it at some point. In America, fantastic film. Uh, one of the most heartwarming, heart rending, uh, emotional journeys a film can take you on ever it's just really brilliant fantastic um anyone who's got kids and a family and he's really trying to hold them together you watch this it'll tear you apart and pick up the pieces um in bruges fantastic film a uh, really brilliant central performance by colin farrell uh, he proved himself as a, a fantastic actor not just a good actor but a great actor for me with this film um martin mcdonough uh, just his script for this is is amazing absolutely brilliant full of great one-liners it's a bit some of them a bit on the nose but yeah just really brilliantly scripted um inception uh yeah just real fine work by christopher nolan never made a bad film check out my review for that for that if uh, if you've not seen it already i have reviewed all of christopher nolan's films uh the incredibles i think yeah going else it is my favorite of the uh pixar movies i just i love superheroes and i love what they did with this it's it's irreverent while also paying respect to the genre. Um, <clears throat> brilliant film. Independence Day. Uh, Roland Emmerich blows up some more uh, world famous monuments. And when this came out, actually, it had such. I, I just. I remember the impact that the special effects had on me. I remember on everyone just seeing the effects in this f for the first time. We, it was just unimaginable. It was just. It was just fantastic. It just made my jaw hit the floor. And it's it's a shame that when you watch it now, it looks dated. You look at the effects in this now and they, they don't really hold up. The film does in a way, it's a good action film, but it's just, it's bizarre how, just how, how captivated the world became with this film. Um, in, in the same way that they did with something like Jurassic Park, only the difference is Jurassic Park still holds up. The effects in that still hold up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a good film. Um, Indiana Jones trilogy. Uh, I will forever call it a trilogy and it will remain a trilogy because the last film sucked. Um, actually, the Temple of Doom isn't that great, if we're honest. If we're really being honest, Temple of Doom is not a great film. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Last Crusade, two really good films. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is still a little bit overrated, I think. Um, don't attack me for that. I, I'd give it an 8 out of 10, a very high 8 out of 10. Um, but yeah, Last Crusade for me is, is the best of the of the trilogy. Um, and there's still good, good films, good action films. Uh, Infernal Affairs. Uh, if you've seen The Departed, you, you might know that that's a remake of this film. Uh, I like The Departed a lot, but for me, just the efficiency of this film, the fact that it tells the exact same story in an hour less screen time tells me something about the way in which it's edited and the way in which the story is told um, and for me that's why I consider this to be the better of the two films. Infernal Affairs 2, um, yeah I haven't seen this yet, uh, I got it because I wanted to complete the trilogy um, and I did like the first film an awful lot so I, I do definitely want to get around to seeing this at some point. So again Infernal Affairs 3, uh, same really, I uh, will get around to watching them at some point. Um, original version of Inglorious Bastards. Uh, my wife picked this up for me, thinking it was the the Quentin Tarantino one. Um, I've not watched it. Uh, can't say it really appeals, but may, maybe one day. Um, the Insider, brilliant film. Uh, not quite Michael Mann's best. I think that honor goes to Heat, but this is certainly a close second. Brilliant performances by Pacino and Crow, uh, and just tremendous script. The script for this is just so brilliantly written. Insomnia, um, really good procedural thriller, uh, again starring Pacino, uh, who does a really fine job, and Robin Williams in a role that you wouldn't expect him to, sit to expect to see him in, uh, does a fine job in that too. Uh, the International has one of the best uh, shootouts ever in a film. Um, that might be overstating it a bit much, but it does have a really good shootout in, in, in it. Um, a film that I didn't quite 
get the first time around because I think I was I was a bit tired and I, I must have missed a few bits. But second time around, got it and it's good. It's a nice little thriller. Uh, in the bedroom, haven't watched it. I picked it up primarily because it's by a guy called Todd Field who directed a film called Little Children, which I thought was just staggeringly good. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see more of his work. So I've bought this and I will watch it at some point. Into the Wild, directed by Sean Penn. Brilliant film, fantastic performance by Emile Hirsch. Um, but yeah, just, just a really good road movie. Um, bit of a sad story in many ways but also a very hopeful story um kind of the way it looks at humanity uh, just uh yeah it, on the whole it has a positive outlook it's, it's a good film very solid iron giant one of my favorite animated movies of all time just brilliant heartfelt family film uh very touching and a, and a fantastic ending too iron man the film that started it all for the for the new kind of Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, yeah, really good. Still one of the strongest Marvel movies to date. Italian Job remake. I was never a big fan of the original, uh, so it doesn't bother me at all that they remade it. I thought it was overrated. This isn't a great film, but it's entertaining enough. It ticks along at its own pace. And yeah, there's... Oh, wow. Wally Fister is director of photography. You'll learn something every day. Uh, yeah, I'll get around to watching that again. Edward Norton's pretty funny in it. Uh, it happened one night, not seen it, but I'm a big Frank Capra fan, which is the reason I bought this. I will get around to watching this at some point. It's all about love. Again, I've not seen it. I bought it because it looked interesting. I like Joaquin Phoenix. We'll get around to watching it. It's a Wonderful Life, one of the best films ever made, the best Christmas film ever made. And it's just... It's the, if, if I go by one year without seeing this um if 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 we got if a christmas passes by and i've not watched it then i do feel sad this year actually i, I normally watch this every year with my wife at christmas and i didn't this year we didn't get around to it because it was quite busy and that that just really disappoints me because it's it's just it feels like christmas when i've watched this film the jacket um and not seen it uh i I don't know why I picked this film up actually because it it doesn't it doesn't grab me as something I really want to see but I think I must have just picked it up cheap. I'll I'll get around to watching it at some point. Uh, Jack Reacher, very underrated, uh, really brilliant film. Uh, director Christopher McQuarrie. He also wrote uh, Usual Suspects and. His first film as director as well was Way of the Gun, which again is another underrated film, I think, or certainly underseen. Um, looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with the new Mission Impossible film. But if you've not seen this, it's really funny, it's really action-packed, it's, it's a really good film, I like it. Jane Austen Book Club. Uh, Jarhead, uh, again, a Sam Mendes film, a really good war film. Um, doesn't say a right lot. Um, about war that we haven't seen in many other films but it's really well handled brilliantly directed and just uh, yeah this this was the first time like Jake Gyllenhaal really beefed up for a role and, and it, it kind of yeah and you noticed um, but uh, yeah it's fast becoming one of my favourite actors so if you haven't seen that check that out J. Edgar, not a lot of people liked this. I wouldn't rate it as um, one of Clint Eastwood's best, but I certainly think it's a better film than most people give it credit for. Um, it's beautifully shot, and yeah, there's some, some really nice performances in it. Uh, Jindabyne, if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not sure that I am, but Laura Linney is fantastic in this, um, and what's his face? Gabriel Byrne is quite good in this as well but this is directed by Ray Lawrence who directed my favorite all-time Australian film Lantana um, and that's the reason I bought this and also if you've seen a film called Shortcuts by the guy I can't remember his name um, famous director anyway it escapes me at this time but if you've seen Shortcuts there's a it's again a bit like Magnolia it's loads of stories that cross over and stuff one of the short stories is in that is based on um, a book uh, and this is essentially the full-length kind of adaptation of that book so uh, yeah so if you've seen shortcuts you'll kind of know you, you'll you'll and you watch this you, you'll kind of pick up some similarities you'll, you'll feel like it's familiar 
But this is a good film, uh, very haunting, I think, very, very haunting. Um, and just, yeah, like I say, a cracking central performance by Laura Linney, who is one of my favourite actresses. Kick-Ass, very funny, very uh, irreverent, just, uh, yeah. Uh, Matthew Vaughan just having fun, basically, and it's, it's quite violent, a bit more violent than I would expect, uh, but very good film, very entertaining. Um, the sequel, Kick-Ass 2, uh, didn't re it wasn't really received as warmly as the first one. I think it's pretty much just as good, to be honest. It's just as funny, it's just as entertaining. Jim Carrey's fantastic in it. Um, but yeah, uh, I enjoyed it, and I think it sits really nicely with its predecessor. Kill Bill Volume 1, probably my favourite Tarantino film. I know I said earlier that uh, it'd probably be Django Unchained, but overall this film is probably let down a little bit by this film that isn't quite as strong it's still a very good film but when you put these together to make the one complete kill bill film it's this one that kind of lets the side down a little bit um king arthur picked it up really cheap it was a much better film than i was uh thinking that it was going to be it's still not great it's not going to blow your mind but i will probably watch it again at some point jonah hex <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not great, is it? Um, it's there though. It's it's in my collection. Uh, you know, so it, it's under eighty minutes long, and sometimes I just want to stick something on that I don't have to think about too much. Um, that I know within an hour and twenty minutes I can watch and then be out the door. This is one of them films. Uh, Joseph, King of Dreams. Uh, this is a straight to DVD film. Uh, essentially. In a way, a sequel, a uh, spiritual sequel, so to speak, to uh, Prince of Egypt, which was the much better film that got a cinema release. This is still quite a good film, actually. Uh, much, much. The songs in it have a lot more efforts gone into them than you'd expect for a straight to DVD release. So, yeah, I recommend that. Jumper, very underrated. Would have loved to have seen a sequel to this, directed by Doug Lyman, who again did. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow and The Born Identity, really good action sci-fi film and uh, just some really clever visuals in there. Junebug, um, I don't remember a right lot from this film, I have seen it, uh, again primarily for Amy Adams who I love, I think she's fantastic in everything she does, she gives a really good performance in this, although she's only supporting actress in this. Um, yeah, it's a, I remember this being quite a quirky family drama uh, which I'll give that a watch again at some point. Uh, Jurassic Park Trilogy, first one is fantastic, still holds up even today. The other two, not so much. Um, if the new film that comes out um, is somewhere between the quality of the first and the second one, then I'll be happy, but overall I'm not that excited for the new one. I think that the first one's still a classic and the rest, are, I can take them or leave them to be honest. Um, Justice League Crisis on Two Earths, one of the best of the DC animated movies in my mind, has a very, has a Watchmen feel to it um, really. This is like uh, Justice League uh, via, via Watchmen, um, it feels like a cross between those two, very good. Um, Secret Origins, this, this is essentially just the three pilot, the, the, the pilot episodes, the first three episodes of the series put together as a film. It's good, it's entertaining, it's fun, it's uh, it's nothing particularly revelatory or anything. Just Like Heaven, mentioned this before, um, primarily because of Mark Waters, who I think uh, is, is a pretty strong director when it comes to chick flicks. Again, not going to blow you away, but it's, it's just, for what it is, it's quite entertaining and it's something I can watch with my wife um, and, and not feel too, too girly about. Um, <clears throat> Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut, theatrical cut is, it's, it's an okay film, it's not brilliant. Director's cut is fantastic. I, I'm not kidding you. If you've not seen the director's cut of this, but you have seen the theatrical cut and you're a bit, nah, you need to watch this. This is almost on a par with Gladiator. If it wasn't for the fact that Gladiator came first, I'd probably say it was on a par, but it's just, it's a completely different film. Fantastic. King Kong, really good. Uh, one of the best action sequences ever put to film with the, the fight scene between um, Kong and the T-Rexes. Really good um, and, and a, quite a, a poignant ending, I think. Um, a, a really lovely, beautifully shot film as well. Uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, extremely funny, brilliant script. 
excellent direction by Shane Black. I love Shane Black's films. Um, this has just got his presence all over it, really. Uh, Kite Runner, haven't seen it, but it's directed by Mark Foster, who I have already mentioned is one of my favourite unsung heroes uh, uh, when it comes to directing. Um, so I, I will look forward to seeing that at some point. K19, The Widowmaker, not great. Uh, it's, it's, it's better than I remember it being. I, I bought this not so long ago, um, very cheaply. Uh, I think I picked this up for like 25p or something, actually. Um, gave it a watch. It's all right. It's entertaining, but I'll probably end up giving it my dad. Um, Kramer vs. Kramer. I bought it because it was a Best Picture Oscar winner. Uh, a very good film. Um, obviously, by today's standards, it's, it, it deals with an issue that today probably isn't quite as... It's, it's not quite the issue that, that needs talking about in the way that it was back when this film was made um, but yeah it's brilliant performances and Meryl Streep is fantastic in this she goes from playing someone that you could kind of easily hate to to then someone that actually you sympathize with and realize she, she's actually she's been hard done to and and you can understand why she does what she does and it's just yeah really great performances and, and really fine script Speaking of fine scripts, LA Confidential. Possibly one of the best scripts ever written. Um, this this has to be in my top 10 scripts ever written. Um, just, what, what Brian Helgeland and, and Curtis Hansen did translating the book, which I haven't read, but by all accounts was ridiculously complex, ridiculously complicated. And one of them books people say is unfilmable. The fact that they managed it with this and in the way that they did is just, yeah, it's just, I, I can't praise the script enough. Brilliant film. Uh, Lady and the Tramp, uh, it's not my favourite Disney film, but it's 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 good, you know. I'll, I will watch it again because uh, I've, I've got a child, obviously, so at some point it's bound to go on. Um, Lady in the Water, as I mentioned before, um, I, I I am a, a Shyamalan fan, um, not of his last two films, three. After Earth weren't that great. Um, uh, last Airbender was atrocious, but Happening I thought was underrated, was actually quite good. And this, I thought, the problem from that stems from this, I think, is that Shyamalan cast himself as the writer character who turns out to be the saviour of mankind. If he hadn't have cast himself so egotistically in that role, I don't think this film would get half the flack that it gets. I think it's a solid film. I think it's quite good, actually. Um, Lake Placid, it's a short burst of action with some humour in it. It's quite good. Um, yeah, it's, it's don't take itself too seriously. Uh, Lantana, as I said, this is probably my favourite Australian film. It has a Magnolia vibe about it, it's brilliant. Um, some really well written characters, highly recommend it. Uh, Larry Crown, not a spectacular film, but a bit of a bit of fluff. Again, like, like I've said before, some films you just want to put something on that's a bit fluffy and light, something that isn't going to be too taxing, and that's that does the job. Uh, Last Chance Harvey, really great chick flick. One of my favourite chick flicks. Um, I, don't, I don't like using the term chick flick, actually, and I'm sorry if some people find that derogatory. Um, it's just it's just a term, isn't it? But what people mean by chick flick, this kind of falls into that category, and I think it's one of the best. I think it's a really solid, strong film with two great performances by Thompson and Hoffman. Last Samurai, uh, one of my favourite films. It's just really good story. Uh, it's basically dances with wolves but with samurai instead of indians um but i just i just really like it I, it's it's a timeless story and it's the reason avatar is is such a good film as well it's a story that it will be it, this isn't the first and it certainly won't be the last time it's told um, but just that that story of an outsider going into a culture that they don't understand and being kind of won over by them and seeing the beauty within it um, it's just a really good story and Ken Watanabe's great in this, Tom Cruise is great in this uh, and it's just some really beautifully choreographed uh, fight sequences and cinematography. It's, it's a really good film. Um, LA Takedown. This is basically a made-for-TV movie that um, later became Heat. It's directed by Michael Mann, written and directed by Michael Mann. This is, is it, it is essentially the same film as Heat, just with lesser actors and a much lower budget. Um, uh, and it's half the screen time as well. So 
if, if, if you want to see the blueprint for Heat, that's essentially what this is, and it's still a really good film. Obviously nowhere near the class of Heat because it doesn't have the kind of talent involved, but proof that Michael Mann knew what he was doing uh, long before uh, he got the chance to, to, to do it with a bigger budget. Um, the Legend of Bag of Vance, uh, I... I didn't dislike this film. I got it because Robert Redford direct, directed it, um, but yeah, it's not his strongest effort, is it? Really? It's yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't think I'll be watching it again. Anyway, uh, Legends of the Guardians, The Owls of Garhul. Despite the uh, ridiculous title, this is a really underrated film, really underappreciated. Uh, Zack Snyder does a really excellent job with the animation, with the visuals. He's obvious. He's known as a visual director, and that really shows here. But it's a really good film, and I'd have liked to have seen a sequel to this, which we're obviously not going to get because it didn't do all that well at the box office. Um, and finally, Leon. Luke Besson's best film, um, Natalie Portman's debut, I think, but she, she's fantastic in the role. Um, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful film. Absolutely stunning. So there you go, there's the first part of my DVD collection. I hope to do the second part of my DVDs in another video, so look out for that. Um, it's probably best I end here now though, because I am starting to lose my voice, if I'm honest. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, but if you have any thoughts on my collection so far, if you if you just want to chat about anything film related, then please comment in the section below, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. This is... Why am I going blank? Why am I going blank?